people are asking the question, why should I buy a 406 megahertz PLB as opposed to carrying my cell phone, a satellite phone, will my GPS work, uh, or even these new satellite messaging devices? What's the difference? We get that question frequently. The problem is that all of these devices are really designed and intended for some other use. A PLB is a device of last resort that was designed, uh, the entire system was designed and conceived by the search and rescue community around the world to be a dedicated device of last resort that will work when all other means of self-rescue have been exhausted. Let's talk about what happens when you push that button. The first thing that happens is we turn on the GPS receiver inside the beacon and we begin acquiring GPS data from the GPS satellite system, which is a separate system. Those GPS coordinates, when available, are incorporated into the signal and that 406 megahertz signal goes blasting at 5 watts through tree canopies, meteorological activity, whatever, into outer space to two different satellite constellations. The first of those two search and rescue satellite systems is called the LEOSAR, or the Low Earth Orbit Search and Rescue Satellite System. Every point on Earth, on average, is covered or viewed by these satellites roughly every 90 minutes. And they can locate the 406 megahertz beacon using a phenomenon known as Doppler shift. A lot of people think of this as a form of triangulation, and it is in a way. But using the Doppler shift phenomena, they inherently locate the beacon based upon its signal. Now, remember the signal also can carry your GPS data. So now we have your position through Doppler shift as well as through uh, GPS-derived coordinates. The second constellation in the system is called the GEOSAR, Geosynchronous Search and Rescue Satellite System. And these satellites set at 22,000 miles altitude. Their orbit of the Earth is once every 24 hours, so their view of Earth is continuous or synchronous. It doesn't change. Any 406 beacon activated within their field of view, which is huge, is heard by those satellites in a near instantaneous fashion. They don't have the ability, like the LEOSAR does, to locate you using Doppler shift or any other technique. But if you have incorporated GPS data into your transmission, then the GEOSAR knows who you are where and where you are by virtue of your GPS data. At this point, both the GEOSAR and the LEOSAR rebroadcasts that alert message to LUTs, or local user terminals. The local user terminal forwards the alert message along with the position data to the appropriate MCC or Mission Control Center. The MCCs are the link in the chain where your registration information resides. Each of these beacons has a unique serial number and that serial number is matched to your personal file. That information is added to the alert message and it is forwarded on to the Rescue Coordination Center. When the RCC receives the alert message from the MCC, it then knows where you are, who you are, and that you're in trouble. It has all of the information. And the RCC coordinates with the local rescue agency and instructs them to begin the process of putting together a rescue party. At the same time, they actually begin calling the contact information um, that's provided in your registration form. And as soon as the rescue agency can organize the rest of the details of the rescue party, they hit the ground running. And they use the 121.5 megahertz homing signal in the, the beacon to actually come to your location. So in every one of these beacons, there is a built-in multiple levels of redundancy to ensure that they work when you need them most. Now that you understand how a 406 megahertz beacon works, let's compare it to some of these other types of devices and their shortcomings when, it, when we talk about using them in a life-threatening situation. The most common safety signaling device that people carry are cell phones. They're, they throw them in as an afterthought. Everyone has one and, and why not? 
Unfortunately, they have a habit of being dead or the batteries are dead when you need them most or cell tower coverage is spotty in remote areas. Most people who call 911 are lost. They don't know where they are. That's why they're calling. The biggest problem with using a cell phone in that situation is they can't really tell search and rescue where they are. One of the biggest problems with a satellite phone is that you really want to use the darn thing. And in an emergency, the battery is probably going to be dead or too low to be effective. Another problem with satellite phones is poor satellite reception. You also have with satellite phones the same problem that you have with cell phones and that most people don't know where they are. And the final really biggest problem with relying upon a satellite phone is they're not ruggedized. They were never intended to be waterproof or capable of withstanding the shock and the vibration that generally associates traumatic events. A GPS is a receiver. It tells you where you are. A 406 megahertz PLB is a transmitter. It tells search and rescue where you are. That's really the most pivotal difference. But it's also worth pointing out that GPS's sometimes are the reason people get into trouble. We rely on them too much. And they receive these signals which are transmitted from outer space um, at about the 1.6 gigahertz frequency at very low power levels. Um, and they don't work well under trees. The signals get absorbed by trees. They, they bounce off of, uh, of uh, buildings and other structures. And frequently, your GPS not being able to work accurately is the source of your emergency situation. The final category that I want to talk about are satellite messengers. And these are the subscription-based tracking and messaging devices that also have a 911 function. Unfortunately, they use the 1.6 gigahertz frequency, which is the same frequency used by GPS systems, and they have the same problem. 1.6 gigahertz will be absorbed by trees, it'll be absorbed by snow, uh, it has a problem getting through. Because these are approved to the same standard as a garage door opener, the FCC Part 15 rule, their power is limited to roughly 400 milliwatts. So you're talking about a low power transmitter with a frequency problem and there's a very significant chance that these devices will not be able to transmit out of a slot canyon or from a heavy tree canopy covered with snow. There's also no redundancy built into their system. This device either works or it doesn't work. If it can't acquire a GPS signal, then it's not going to transmit any position data whatsoever. They're also subscription-based. If you let your subscription lapse, the beacons will not work. Unlike the 406 megahertz system, which is backed by the world's government agencies and the search and rescue agencies, and there is no subscription fee. Satellite messengers are also commercially based. They are created by uh, satellite communication companies that are commercial companies. If they change their business model, if they decide to, to get out of the search and rescue business tomorrow, your device will not work. Compare this to a 406 megahertz beacon, which is backed by the COSPAS SARSAT system, and that's an internationally funded satellite system that's been around for over 20 years and will be around for many, many years to come. Finally, the satellite messenger devices that are on the market today were designed to run on common AA batteries. If you choose alkaline batteries, unfortunately, these devices probably won't work when you need them most. If you're looking to make a safety signaling purchase, you really need to figure out what you want to do. If you're looking for something that's a communication device, a cell phone is a great choice, a satellite phone is a great choice. If you want to track your position or if you want to send a message to someone, there are other devices that will do those types of things. But if you're looking for a device of last resort, for use when all other means of self-rescue have been exhausted, a 406 megahertz beacon is your best last chance.